One of my philosophies in making these tech videos is to relate to you my experience in an honest and biased way, being an average consumer like yourself. Just like you, I bought these laptops using my own money. The aim of my tech reviews is to show you how all these numbers and specs actually translate into real life usage. I am going to talk to you about eight different aspects and I will tell you why I'm sticking to the pro over the air. In terms of design, they are pretty identical. The MacBook Pro weighs three pounds, while the MacBook Air weighs 2.8 pounds. In real life, I don't really feel any significant difference between the two, so going for the Air won't make any difference with portability. When it comes to thickness, there isn't really a huge difference. As you can see, the MacBook Air is thicker on one end and slightly thinner on the other one, whilst the MacBook Pro have maintained its thickness from one end to the other. Ports are also identical. There are two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports and a headphone socket. Up to this day, I still don't understand why Apple had to take out two of their USB 4 ports. It really is all about the dongle life. Keyboards are identical and both of which have the backlit Magic Keyboard. The Air's keyboard slightly slopes. Both laptops also have the Force Touch trackpad. That is just the best trackpad out there in my opinion. I did a Dell XPS 13 versus MacBook Pro 2018 comparison and I cannot believe what the Dell's trackpad felt like considering it was a £1600 laptop. There is a difference between these trackpad though and that is the size. As you can see, the MacBook Pro has a larger trackpad compared to the Air. For me personally, having an average size hands, I did not notice the difference when working. My husband have larger hands than me and he can definitely feel the difference of having smaller trackpad with the Air, which can be annoying for him at times. The biggest difference between these two in this category is the touch bar. The MacBook Pro has a touch bar whilst the MacBook Air does not have a touch bar. Now I know the touch bar is a love it or hate it kind of thing. I personally like using the touch bar so that's one of the reasons why I prefer the Pro. Although it is heavily rumored that Apple is going to remove the touch bar. Both of them have the touch ID on the corner by the way so you're not missing that feature on the air despite it not having the touch bar. Let's now move on to our work from home essentials, which are the built-in camera, microphone, and speaker. Both cameras have 720p FaceTime HD camera, just like last year's models, but they have added the new image signal processor, which makes the image looks better. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison using similar light conditions. When it comes to the speakers, MacBook Air has stereo speakers versus stereo speaker with high dynamic range for the MacBook Pro. Let's test out a couple of music and talking videos placing the microphone in the same distance so you can see if the MacBook Pro would be noticeably better. What do you guys think? I personally didn't notice any difference whilst using them daily and if I would be blindfolded, I won't be able to guess which is which. So for me personally, my speaker experience when watching videos on these laptops is identical. But if you're a musician or an expert of some sort, you may be able to tell the difference and may consider the Pro over the air for that reason. When the M1 laptops were announced, one of the many things that I was excited about was the built-in microphone of the MacBook Pro. 
Apple said that they have added studio quality microphone on the pros. If you do lots of Zoom meetings or just started learning video or audio editing and don't want to shell out money on an external microphone just yet, then having the pro is definitely an advantage. Of course, it is 300 pounds more expensive, so you'd have to look at the overall picture as an extra 300 pounds can buy you an amazing external microphone, but your typical use can ultimately determine whether or not the pro is for you. This is to test the microphone of the MacBook Air. Let's see if there's any difference between this and then the MacBook Pros. My distance between the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air is similar. What do you think? Does this sound better or does the MacBook Pro sound better? Both the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air have the M1 chip in them. The main difference between the Air and the Pro that affects the performance is the fan. The MacBook Pro does have a fan, whilst the Air doesn't. This means that the Pro is capable of more sustained performance over a long period of time. Both the Air and the Pro will have an identical peak performance, but the Air will have a less sustained performance, as the absence of the fan means that there is nothing to cool down the M1 chip when it's getting hot, which happens if you perform intensive tasks. For the past three months that I have been using these laptops on a daily basis, my heaviest regular task is video editing and that is 4K footage using Final Cut Pro and editing pictures from my Sony A6400 using Lightroom. There were days when I would be editing videos four hours at a time. The MacBook Pro have stayed cooler than the air. The fan was never really loud and to be honest, I hardly hear it and have forgotten that it's even there. Again, this is based on my daily real life usage where my toddler would be singing Baby Shark in the background whilst I'm trying to work. The MacBook Air is noticeably hotter for me when I use it for photo or video editing over a period of time. In terms of performance though, there isn't any noticeable difference for me. I have not noticed the air slowing down or lagging, but bear in mind that on average, I work four hours straight before I'd have to stop. If you normally work on heavy tasks such as photo or video editing for longer hours, I would definitely consider going for the Pro as the air does get noticeably hot. The batteries in both of these laptops are just impressive, especially coming from the MacBook Pro 2018. My previous MacBook would last me about four to five hours on my average use, but these two would still have roughly 50% battery left after such usage. On paper, Apple says the Air lasts up to 15 hours of wireless web, whilst the MacBook Pro lasts 17 hours. After three months of daily usage of these two laptops, I can say that I have haven't really noticed any great difference when it comes to battery life. They both last so much longer than my previous laptops and that difference is noticeable. Let's talk about all the similarities first. Retina display, supported scale resolution, white color P3 and True Tone technology. The only difference between the two is the nits brightness. MacBook Air has 400 nits and the MacBook Pro has 500 nits. This means that if you crank up the brightness in both laptops, you will see that the MacBook Pro is slightly brighter than the MacBook Air. So if you are somebody who watches a lot of Netflix or YouTube on your laptop, you may appreciate the extra brightness. I personally don't crank up the brightness and I mostly work using my Samsung Odyssey G9 monitor. The circumstance when it will make a difference for me is when I am trying to work outdoors. I love the sun and I can't wait for summer and I'm also hoping to visit the Philippines soon when it is safe to do so. So I will definitely appreciate the extra 100 nits when the sun is shining on my screen and for that reason I find the extra 100 nits helpful. If you are a creator, then I bet you would want to know how both of these laptops perform in real life. So I'm making a test using Final Cut Pro. This will be pushing the graphics and the CPU on both laptops. So we will find out if there would be a difference. So as you can see, they are both playing back perfectly smooth. As I have mentioned, I have edited videos in both of these laptops and without any formal testing, they feel comparable in real life. Let's try and export these.
So I am currently editing the video and to be completely honest with you, I am shocked by the two minutes and five seconds difference when it comes to exporting from the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. As I've mentioned, I do use both of them when it comes to editing videos. I've been using the MacBook Pro more than the MacBook Air when I edit footage and I have said in the beginning that it is my machine of choice because of the fan. When I am actually editing, I don't feel any significant difference. I don't feel the air to be slower than the Pro. When it comes to exporting videos, I don't tend to sit down and actually watch it export. I would tend to step out of the room or do something else. So this is definitely a shocker for me. It's very interesting and I may be doing more tests in the future. So let me know if that's something that you'd like to see. So I guess if you do edit a lot of 4K footages just like me, and if you happen to have the extra $300, then by all means go for the pro over the air. So again, this would depend on your workflow, tasks, and how long you would edit in an extended period of time. We know that there is a fan on the Pro, so it will be subjective if you would actually need it. Both of these laptops are just capable. They both have the new M1 chip. I am definitely blown away with how amazing these two laptops are. There is a 300 pounds difference between the two. So the question is, is the Pro worth the extra 300 pounds? This would be, of course, depending on your daily tasks and your workflow. For the majority of typical users, the Air is more than capable and there are lots of things you can do from that 300 pounds that you will save. One of the biggest difference between the to is a touch bar if you actually like that and the fan which will cool down your laptop allowing peak performance over an extended period of time. For me personally one of the ways I look at things when buying something is the cost per use. I know I'm going to use this laptop for years so after a year of usage the extra £300 for me for the Pro will cost me 82p per day as I edit 4k videos regularly plus photo editing and all my other tasks. I do appreciate the fan. I do like the touch bar and the studio quality microphone is amazing and it would definitely be handy if for some reason I haven't got my external microphone. The thing that bugs me the most is the lack of ports in this Pro. Apple knows what Pro users need but they still decide to take two ports away from their previous models. As these models are the first generation of the M1 chip, I reckon they will blow us away in the future models that will make us want to spend more. So have you decided if you're going for the Pro or the Air? I'd love to know in the comment section and if you're looking for the best monitor for a new M1 laptop you may want to check out my Samsung Odyssey G9 video on the description box. That's a wrap for today my friends. Don't forget the whole like and subscribe thing because that helps out with my channel's analytics and I'd love to see you on my next video. Paalam!